You know, friends, I've spent the last two weeks pouring through the news, and there's so much to pour through right now. You have the war with Ukraine and Russia. You have supply issues. You have gas prices. You have food shortages. It's tax time now, so you have all of that. You have the the debate going on right now with uh, transgender youth and how they should be dealt with and how they should be taught and how what teachers should be allowed to say there's just so many things right so i've poured through it trying to figure out okay as a guy putting out content for people what is the most important part of all of this what might tie it all together what is it that ultimately we should all be focused on because these are all like little little bullet point things in the grand scheme of things and i know i use the word bullet point and you might say well some of this is a big deal and i would agree some of it is a lot of it is but it's all bullet points in the bigger societal picture so what do you boil it all down to and I've come to the conclusion, and I've been leaning this way for a long time, but I've, I've definitely landed on it in the last couple of weeks. So much of what we need to focus on right now, first and foremost, in my mind, comes down to language. The language that we use, the words that we use, how they're used for good, and frankly, how they're used against us. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about language and words. I want to talk about words that we've eliminated. I want to talk about words that we've substituted. I want to talk about how we frame things because language is important. It's interesting. You hear all the time now that language is violence. You hear people say that if you utter a word or you utter a phrase that it's that it's it's hateful it's violent well quite frankly i think we also need to look at it as it's if we're going to call it violence <clears throat> frankly a lot of it is violence being used against us so let's go ahead and dig into it and the first thing i want to start with is the idea of eliminating words this is a, a lovely article from the cbc okay and they've got this nice graphic up above, and I'm just going to focus on the graphic. And you can see it here on screen if you're visually gifted watching on YouTube or Rumble. These are all words that they mention in their article. And I'm not going to read through the article because, quite honestly, a lot of it is just stupid to me. <clears throat> but some of the words that they say should not be used anymore are words like savage or spooky or crippled or tribe, or blindsided, or lame, or first world problem, things like that. And this is a relatively new article. This was just from November, so it's only a few months old. But this is, this is an example of words that just somebody decided, well, these shouldn't, shouldn't be anymore. And we can guess at the reason why, you know, you're not supposed to use the word crippled because somebody who has some kind of physical uh, impairment might find that offensive. But we can use the word crippled in, in other contexts, right? We can say, you know, that loss of a paycheck really crippled my ability to pay my bills this week. And the idea that somebody should take offense to that is is lunacy. But there are people out there that would take that and go, well, you're being hateful because you use that word. Well, no hate was actually intended. So, But the idea is, well, we're just going to eliminate these words. And some of them make no sense to me. Like the idea of not using the word first world problem. Well, that's a phrase, not a word, but they list it here. But their their rationale behind that is that well people who are in countries that have less advantages to us may be offended the people who are in countries that have less than us have a lot more to worry about than the language that we use but this is the kind of stuff that's going on this is just a recent list of words according to the cbc that we shouldn't use but the truth is, is that these lists keep getting longer and longer and longer. And some of them, <coughs> excuse me, finding a little bit of a sore throat today. Some of them are, are so crazy, which is probably on the list too, just for me to use that word. Uh, 
but s some of it has gotten so far that if I even utter that word on YouTube, uh, I'm going to get at the very least, the video would never qualify for monetization at the worst. It could be deleted and I could get a strike for it. It's, it's craziness, but this is some of what we face. But when you eliminate words, you tighten up the ability to be descriptive. You tighten up the ability to communicate with people. So what happens is, is that the language gets harder and harder to use. That's a problem. It eliminates our ability to tell a story, to paint a picture, and that's no good. But it's happening all the time, and the list keeps getting longer and longer. And furthermore, even beyond just the ability to uh, limit us in our ability to tell stories, it also, quite frankly, criminalizes us. This is the idea of if we're saying words are weapons, words can be hurtful. Well, there are weapons, again, here that can be used against us because if we utter any of these words that are on the list, it becomes a problem for us. Like I just said with YouTube, there are certain words, if I say them, I'm, I'm out. And it's, it's a little bit silly. Actually, it's a lot of bit silly. Then there are other things that are going on with words. Let's say... Let's, let's put it this way. The, the substitution of words. Even in my descriptions that I use in this video, I have to be careful with how I describe. And that alone should paint the picture of how big of a problem this is. But I'm having to choose carefully, <clears throat> excuse me, what I say. And it's, it's, it's silly. I don't get it. One of the biggest examples though of substitution words is in the 80s and into the 90s, we move from using the word sex to the word gender, okay? And when I was growing up, you know, you take these standardized bubble tests, right? Where you fill in the bubble A, B, C, or D, whatever. And you'd always have to put in your demographics and your name and stuff at the beginning. But it was male or female. And above that, it said sex. Well, now it's transitioned to gender. And that substitution word has has gone and kind of clouded the situation in a lot of ways for people when they're trying to discuss issues between male and female. But because gender was originally a word that had to do with language, it had to do with the masculinity or femininity of a word because certain languages attach feminine or masculine to a word. But now we're attaching it to people. So it, 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 in, it brings in this varying degrees, right? This, this vagueness to it. It's no longer a binary. By substituting that word, we've taken something and we've clouded it. That's the biggest and, and most obvious example of a substitution word. But there's this lovely article here, again, if you're on screen, uh, this from uh, Elion, which is a language consultancy that's based, I believe, in Malta. Um, they give us this lovely word of terms that we should no longer use, words that we should no longer use, and then some substitutes for them. For example, instead of saying forefathers, we should say ancestors. Instead of saying man-made, we should say artificial. Instead of saying man on the street, we should say average person. Instead of saying best man for the job, we should say best person for the job. So there's this obvious thing that's going on here, again, back to the sex and gender thing, that anything that uses the word man should be like eliminated, even if it's even if it's not necessarily meant towards male, just because it contains man, it's a problem. Then there's some other things like, <clears throat> excuse me, like plastic surgery should be known as cosmetic surgery now. Slum should be called economically deprived area. Uh, Christian name should be called a first name. Sex change should be called gender reassignment. Again, we eliminate the word sex and we put in gender. You no longer should be known as deaf. You should just be hearing impaired. Why? <laughs> it's it's silliness. This, and this list goes on and on, and there's no sense in going into all of it. But it's silliness that we take words and we say, well, even though they're descriptive of what's going on or the meaning is clear, it's now just like offensive. So we're going to substitute this other thing. 
so it limits the language. But what's going to happen is sooner or later, <clears throat> those who now want to be known as hearing impaired instead of deaf are going to get upset that we call them hearing impaired. And we're going to have to substitute in something else. Ear canal challenged? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But it, it again, it, it twists and it limits. And it, again, it interferes with our ability to, to communicate. Now, if that weren't enough, <clears throat> there's also the idea of framing. And this is where the words and the phrases as we're eliminating them and we're substituting them, this is where it comes into play in the media, whether it be social media, whether it be mainstream media, whatever the case may be. We start to take this language that we're trying to alter and control and then use it to steer an argument, okay? The day that I'm recording this, one of the biggest things in the news right now is price hikes, okay? Prices are going up, inflation's a real thing. Well, the White House is trying to frame this as Putin's price hike. So we acknowledge that there's a price hike, but we're going to frame it by attaching in another word, in this case a name, Putin, to try to blame it on him. How we use words, how we arrange words, is an attempt to assign something to somebody else. But it doesn't, it doesn't paint a true picture of what's going on. In the case of the price hikes, in case of the inflation, is there a reason to believe that what's going on with Ukraine and Russia is contributing to it? Yes. But that framing, that use of language to blame it on a single person doesn't tell the whole story. The truth is, if you look at charts, is that inflation and price hikes were happening long before Putin decided to invade Ukraine. But we use our words to frame it so as, don't look at this, look at this over here. Here's a wonderful exercise for you that uh, I did with my son the other day. Uh, we homeschool our son. It, so we play a lot of these games. We do a lot of these things. My wife and I were in the car the other day and there was this, this uh, corner that we drove through this intersection. And on the corner, there was a whole bunch of people standing. And it was a weird time at night for it. Not something you'd normally see on that corner. And my wife just said, weird, that's a large group of people. Okay. So the game that I played with my son was take those words and rearrange them to have a totally different outcome. And things he came up were like, with, were like that's a large group of weird people. So you're saying, yeah, in that case, you're saying you have a large group of people and they're weird. Uh, you could say that's a weird group of large people, meaning that the group itself is weird. You could say that is a weirdly large group of people, meaning that the size of the group is weird. You could say that is a group of weirdly large people, meaning that the people themselves are weirdly large. So just in how we, we structure our words changes the overall meaning of what's trying to be said. So what's the purpose of what I'm trying to say here if you haven't already gathered it? The purpose is, and what I, I hope that you understand, is that as we read through the news, as we look through things, the choice of words that are being used, the choice of words that aren't being used, okay, so the ones through substitution, and then how those words are put together, how they're framed, is all meant to influence and control. It's all meant to say, don't look over here, look at this thing over here. This is more important. It's meant to steer the conversation in a certain direction. And I think of everything that's going on right now, that's the most important thing we need to understand. That's the biggest thing that we need to focus on, is this idea that what is being put in front of us <clears throat> is one person or one group's direction, one person or one group's viewpoint, their ideal outcome of what they would want us to have from that story. So it's important that we read everything with clear and open eyes. It's important that we dig down deeper, not just take the words 
at their face value. Dig deeper in. What's the real meaning here? Are they arranged in a way that's meant to control us? Are they using this word instead of another word in order to frame the outcome a little more or keep us from seeing something all the way? Are we getting all of our news then from the right source? Should we be going to other sources to compare how they phrase it, how they frame it? And the exact same story might have a totally different meaning based on the words that they choose. And then at that point, which one do we think is right? Or are there bits of truth from each? My point is, is that we have to understand that the language isn't always used in our favor. It's not always used in a way that's meant to help us as much as it's meant to control us. And we have to rise above that. There's so much going on right now, as I indicated at the beginning of this video, it's hard to tell what to talk about. It's hard to tell what to focus on. But the biggest thing that we have to focus on more than anything, quite truthfully, is the words themselves. What do they really mean? What's really being said here? And do I agree or disagree with it? So that's what I would recommend that everybody do. I'd be curious to know your thoughts on this. Do you think that words are being weaponized against us as I kind of think they are? Do you believe in this idea of eliminating words or substituting in words for other words? What did you think of the, the framing uh, exercise that I did? with the weird, that's a large group of people, but then you rearrange the words to frame that in a totally different way. Have you ever thought about things like that? Um, because it happens all the time. So let me know your thoughts on that. If you haven't already done so with the channel, please do take a moment to subscribe. Please consider sharing this video. At the very least, please smash the like button, as they say, as this helps the video get out in front of other people. I do appreciate your time, and thank you for watching.